First Sergeant Powhatan Beatty of the 5th U.S. Colored Infantry Regiment. He was born into slavery on October 8, in 1837 in Richmond, Virginia. He moved to Cincinnati, Ohio in 1849 where he received an education. He also gained his freedom sometime around April 1861, though the exact date is unknown and may have been before he even moved to Ohio. While in school, he developed an interest in theater and made his public acting debut at a school concert. After leaving school, he was apprenticed to a black cabinet maker and eventually worked as a turner. Though his love for theater continued and he did privately study acting, while also receiving training from several coaches including James E. Murdoch, a retired professional stage actor from Philly. About a year after the Civil War broke out, there were many decisive Confederate victories such as the Battle of Richmond in Kentucky, and there were a lot of rumors that there would be an impending Confederate attack on Cincinnati itself, as it was not far from Richmond. And on September 2nd, the men of Cincinnati were organized into work units to build fortifications for the city. In the beginning, the city's African Americans were pressed into service at Bayonet Point, but after the appointment of William Dixon as commander of the black troops, their treatment did improve significantly. Dixon promised that they would be treated fairly and kept together as a distinct unit to be called the Black Brigade. He also allowed them to return home and prepare for military service with orders to report the next morning for duty. Now that day, about 400 men were released and allowed to go home, and the next morning when they were told to report, about 700 reported for duty, and among those men was Powhatan Beatty himself serving in Company 1 of the Brigade's 3rd Regiment. Beatty's unit was assigned to build defenses near the Licking River, and for the next 15 days, this unarmed unit, mind you, had to clear forests, construct forts, magazines, and roads, and dug trenches and rifle pits, far in advance of the Union lines, despite the danger of a Confederate attack. This brigade was later disbanded on September 20th, as the threat of an attack on Cincinnati itself was no longer considered to be a possibility. By June 1863, Ohio did not field an African American combat unit. However, many of blacks from Ohio were being recruited for service in regiments by other states. Beatty enlisted from Cincinnati on June 7, 1863 for a three-year term of service in the Union Army and was among a group of men recruited for a Massachusetts regiment. Joining as a private, he was promoted to sergeant only two days later. Placed in charge of a squad of 47 other recruits and ordered to report to Columbus in Ohio from where they would then be sent to Boston. Upon arriving in Columbus on June 15, however, they learned that the Massachusetts regiments were full and they were unable to accept their service. It was here that the governor of Ohio, David Todd, requested permission from the Department of War to form an Ohio Regiment of African Americans, and permission was granted. On June 17th, Beatty and his squad became the first members of the 127th Ohio Volunteer Infantry, later redesignated the 5th United States Colored Troops. After three months of recruitment and organization in Camp Delaware, the unit set out for Virginia. By the time of the famous Battle of Chaffin's Farm on September 29, 1864, Beatty had already risen to the rank of first sergeant of his Company G. His regiment was among a division of black troops assigned to attack the center of the Confederate defenses at New Market Heights. These defenses consisted of two lines of abatis and one line of palisades manned by Brigadier General John Gregg and his Texas Brigade. It is known that this attack was met by intense Confederate fire, and the Union advance was turned back after reaching a line of Abadie. During this retreat, Company G's color bearer was shot and killed. It was then that Beatty returned through about 600 yards of enemy fire to retrieve the flag and return it to the company's lines. The regiment had suffered severe casualties and completely failed their charge, and of Company G's eight officers and 83 enlisted men who entered this battle, only 16 enlisted men, including Beatty, survived the attack unwounded, 
and none of their officers remained. It was then that Beatty took command of the entire company and led it through a second charge of the Confederate lines. This second attack successfully drove the Confederates from their fortified positions at the cost of three more enlisted men from Company G being killed. By the end of this battle, over 50% of the Black Division had been killed, captured, or wounded. Beatty was commended for his actions on the battlefield by General Benjamin Butler, and several months later, on April 6, 1855, he was awarded the country's highest honor, the Medal of Honor. Beatty continued to distinguish himself throughout his service with the 5th Regiment's further engagements. His actions during the Battle of Fair Oaks and Darbytown Road in October of 1864 earned him a mention in the general orders to the Army of the Potomac. His regimental commander twice recommended him for a promotion to a commissioned officer. However, nothing came of these requests, though Beatty did receive a brevet promotion to lieutenant, meaning he had the rank for a temporary time but did not receive the pay entitled to that rank. By the time he was mustered out of the army, he had participated in 13 battles and numerous other skirmishes. Beatty's post-war life saw him return to Cincinnati and raise a family, his son eventually becoming an assistant U.S. District Attorney for Southern Ohio. Beatty resumed his career as a turner, making cabinets, and pursued amateur acting and some public speaking engagements, giving many public readings for charitable causes. Through the 1870s, he acted in local theaters, directed music and drama expositions in the city, even wrote some plays about a rich southern planter with himself as the lead role. These privately run plays were well received, but Beattie did not engage in self-promotion, so they never moved into public theaters. Now in January 1884, Beattie was working as an assistant engineer at the Cincinnati Waterworks when Henrietta Vinton Davis, a prominent African-American actress, came to perform in the city. Together, he and Miss Davis put on a large musical and drama festival which proved to be very successful, including many works of Shakespeare like Macbeth, with Beattie playing the title role and Davis as Lady Macbeth. Newspapers in both black and white communities of Cincinnati praised their performances, quoting that Beatty threw himself into his part with masterly energy and power. The success of this festival led to Beatty being invited to play as a principal actor in Washington, D.C. for Shakespearean productions organized by Miss Davis, a company including Davis and Beatty and some other amateur actors from the D.C. area, Davis being the premier black Shakespearean actress of their time, was the star of these shows, and Beatty played opposite her as either Macbeth, King Henry VI, and Ignomar. A May 7, 1884 production was even played in Ford's Opera House to a full house of more than 1,100 people, among them Frederick Douglass. There was some heckling during this play, primarily from some of the white attendees. However, a reviewer from the Washington Post reported that Quote, the earnestness and intelligence of several of the leading performers were such as to command the respect of those most deposed to find cause for laughter in everything that was said or done. Washington newspapers praised the actors while noting that some of the supporting cast was a bit inexperienced. Reviewers for African American newspapers were especially pleased to see such an important venue like Ford's Theater host African American acts, seeing it as a huge leap of colored men and women to approach equal ground that their white brothers and sisters hold in these fields. Beatty continued to tour with Davis and performed a show in Philadelphia before he returned to his home in Cincinnati. He helped form his city's literary and dramatic club and in 1888, he became the organization's drama director. He lived out the rest of his life in Cincinnati and died at the age of 79 on December 6, 1916. He is now buried at Union Baptist Cemetery. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this Medal of Honor history lesson. 
and I hope to see you guys in the next one. God bless.